Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. You know, when I think about leadership and I think about how we all want to be great, most humans do, but the reality is that to be great as a leader, you also have to be humble. And that can be a big challenge for most of us, especially. You know, I'm a fighter pilot, and, and being a fighter pilot, you've got to be very confident in yourself. And sometimes we can go over the top and not come across as being humble. But in a group together, we learn to be humble with each other because we have a debrief after every flight, and we take ownership for everything that went right, but also everything that went wrong. And to do that, you have to be humble. It's a good way to, for us to learn to be humble. But today, I want to focus really on this whole idea of humility and how important it is. You know, to be humble and have humility, that word really comes from a Latin word, which means low. And so think about lowering yourself around others. And that's a very good way. I'm a visual person. It's a good way to look at it. I'm lowering myself to make them feel important and to listen to them and to hear what they're saying because I don't know it all. Now, I act like I know it all sometimes, my wife would say, but I coach myself to grow in humility, and I think that's so powerful. So that's what we're talking about this month. You know, humility and that inner requires inner confidence. You have to believe in yourself. That is important. The more secure you are in your own self, the less doubts and fears you have, the less pain you have from growing up and all, the more confident you can be, but also you can be humble with real self-confidence by believing in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, then you can be vulnerable. And that is so powerful to be vulnerable because others are seeing what's happening usually. And when you take ownership for it, they trust you more, even though you didn't, you messed up. You maybe failed in that particular area, but when you take ownership, they respect you more. Well, I'll tell you, when the POWs uh, came home, we were very fortunate in that <laughs> the last three and a half years we were there, we lived in large groups with not much torture going on, we're kind of a live and let live society because of what the wives and families had done back home to change our treatment. But that time together in large cells helped us understand ourselves, understand others, living with people, confident fighter pilots, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for several years. You have to become humble and authentic. And you learn all about yourself. You learn about them. You can't pretend. Everything good and bad comes out. So that was very powerful. You know, one of the guys in our, several of the guys, in fact, all the guys in our stories, we have 20 stories in this new book, Captured by Love, Inspiring True Romance Stories from Vietnam POWs. And these marriages have been so great because the guys have been humble and to take ownership and allow their, elevate their wives and help them feel more important. And the wives have done the same for the guys. So it's a powerful thing, not only at work, but also at home. Well, the thing about this is it requires you to believe in yourself. I said that. And though now I want to talk about that for just a second. If you grew up in a situation where you had a, a rough home life growing up, it's going to be hard to believe in yourself. You've taken responsibility for things you, you didn't do, and, but they were part of your environment. And the more healthy you can grow, the more confident you can be, the more humble you can be because you're not worried about yourself. You can lower yourself in situations. You know, I coached a guy who was a senior leader in a Fortune 500 company. Uh, this was a few years ago. And he was really a good leader, really good person. But in the staff meetings, he would jump up, he would speak up and talk about everything. And his teammates were kind of looking at him. You know, it was like he just had to be heard on everything. And so in coaching him, I asked him about that. What was that about? Why did he have to try to impress everybody and prove he was right? And it really had to do with his relationship, he finally remembered, with his father. His father didn't think that he could get it right all the time. And that stuck with him. And so I said, look, you're smart. Everybody trusts you. We believe in you. You just need to believe in yourself. And 
think about throttling back on speaking up. And he did. And everybody noticed. And his ratings kind of went up like that uh, very quickly. And he's done well. He's a senior VP of a large, large organization now. So accept yourself. Believe in yourself. Become more humble, more vulnerable, and people will trust you more. Now, what you also want to do as a leader and as a teammate is help others believe in themselves so they can before, become more humble. So give them your attention. Lower yourself. Be present for them. Presence is a very powerful thing to help people feel valued and important. And it helps you. It helps them because they're going to perform better. When you believe in them and you humble yourself around them and listen to them, engage with them, encourage them, believe in them, they are going to perform better. They're going to trust you more and they're going to want to stay with your organization longer. So humility and humbleness may sound like a, like a weakness, but in fact, it's very, very strong. It means you believe in yourself. You're very confident in yourself, but you don't have to win and be in control of everything. You can listen and you can encourage others. That makes you a stronger person, a stronger leader in every area of your life. Why don't you give it a go? Try it. I'll tell you, I coach myself every day in the areas of humility. To listen, to lower myself, and to elevate others because that's where I want to be. Take care and God bless.